Welcome back to the next episode of Insider for C-Suite. I'm Timothy Maurice, and today I'm excited because we have a family episode. We've got two daughters and a mom who are doing exciting entrepreneurship work. We're going to start with the mom, because she's the founder and director of Monty Investment Group, MIG. Welcome to Insider for C-Suite. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you are Palesa Monty. You're, yes. you're, we're going to have a conversation with your daughters in a moment. But before we start this whole serious conversation about business, you must be a proud mom. Yes, definitely I am. I am a very proud mom because they listen to me. You, know? <laughs> you must be really proud of your daughters. Um, I'm sure you see a lot of yourself in them. What is one thing you see in them? You know, when they started business, I was worried that they might not like what I want them to do. So it means I've mentored them well for them to see that what I say to them, they mustn't work, they must work for themselves, that, that, that they took from me. What are you learning about the construction space as a woman? Uh, does it being so male dominated, does it bother you? When I started it did, but I was lucky to have mentors who mentored me. And when, but the thing is when you are a woman, you have to be, you have to work 10 times more than men. So that on its own, it was a challenge. But because I have mentors, I managed to get where I am today. Oh, wow. Yes. And the construction business, what do you enjoy about the construction business? You know, I'm building RDP houses. I'm also building schools and roads. But building the nation. Yes. You're basically building the nation. <laughs> but the most, uh, the most amazing one is when I built a house for somebody and then he, was, he, he or she's staying in, in a shack and then they have a new home. Wow. That fulfills me very, very well. Oh, That's mm. amazing. And... Do you remember your first construction deal you did? And how long ago was it? It was 2005. Uh, we were doing RDP houses in, in Fenderstop. So that was so amazing. It was a very good, uh, challenging, but interesting journey for me. Were you there when the families yeah. walked into the homes? Yes, I'm there even today, oh, after wow. 15 years. I'm what the one who gives them the key for their home. Really? Mm. What is your vision for the business uh, over the next five, ten years? What do you see? I just want to see a uh, mentoring young group, one young blood, boys and girls. Then I want to also be able to mentor women like me who wants to be into this industry. Mm. So mentoring is close to you? Yes, no, it's, my, it's my thing. Um, I've already started, in fact. Oh, have you? Yes. Do you find it easier to work with men or women? It's easier to work with men, I must, I must say. Because, really? Yes, because of their mental, they are, they are strong. And then also with women, because, you know, women, when they start something, they will finish it. So when it comes to working alongside women, for a young woman who's getting into the construction business, uh, give us two pieces of advice. What should she be thinking about if she's dreaming of being a powerful woman like you in construction, building houses and homes to build the country? What should she know? What should she do? You know, if you have a dream like that, you must pursue it and then you, mustn't, you must just work hard because at the end of the day, you'll see the results. And uh, you must just, whenever you have a project, please don't, don't, don't use money for that is not meant to be in, in the project for you to have uh, more funds. Traveling, the looking good on Instagram. No, that, <laughs> that doesn't work. Invest back mm, into the business. Invest back into the business. Wow. How did you do so well in building such phenomenal daughters? I mean, your daughters are amazing. We're going to chat to them in a moment. Mm. But give us the secret. For anyone out there with kids, what do you do when they were young to make sure that they grow up entrepreneurial, focused, and building their careers? You know what, um, I, I feel that I'm, I'm a born entrepreneur because I have never worked myself for anybody. So I was hoping my kids must also do likewise, you know. So when they were young, I was already grooming them to be where I want them to be, more than I, where I am now. So you take them with you when you were out yes. doing... Uh... Yes, whenever I used to own salons, I used to own catering company. So with catering company, they used to come and help me there. So I could see that there's that thing, you know, they have that thing wow. that I'm looking that, for. That <laughs> thing. 
Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm really grateful you decided to come on Inside of our C-Suite. I'm going to go now and talk to them, and I'm going to find out a little bit more about you when I talk to them. From the inspiring mom who gave birth to this business and these amazing daughters, we shift the conversation to the young women who are running fashion and travel enterprises. Como? Sejo? Welcome to Inside Our Seas. Such a pleasure to be here, Tim. So, let's start with you, Goma. I've known you for a long time, and it's yeah. amazing to see you evolve and grow and move into this space of entrepreneurship. Lorato Travel, you, yes. you've been able to merge your passion and your entrepreneurship interests yes, and so forth. Yes, yes, definitely. How is, how is the travel business? Travel is the most amazing business to have because you get to give your clients such a great uh, travel experience. Um, it's, it's, it's actually been so fulfilling to see my clients globetrot, uh, going to their most amazing places. We've done anniversaries, we've done um, girls trips, so it's been such an amazing journey for us. I can imagine you've probably had like this private jet experience with your mother uh, on Mother's <laughs> Day. I'm sure. I mean, I just had a conversation with Whoa! her. She's amazing. Not, what, what it's have you in done? the pipeline. It's in the pipeline. <laughs> what have you done close for your mom? Um, I think if anything, mom loves to travel. She's, every, every time we go somewhere, she's, she's always the one exploring. So we like taking her to, to different places. Um, we like going to Thailand and the States. And so Los she's, the, if, LA yeah. for the Beyonce concert. Yes, we once took her for that because yeah. she loves music as oh, well. Wow. Yeah. She's such a young at heart um, mm -hmm. mother, uh, and we appreciate her for 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 that. Okay, Seho, your fashion seems to be in your blood. You just kind of yes. ran with it. Yes. You you have a fashion business. Tell us, is it instinctual for you or something you had to learn? I think more than anything is that we grew up in a culture of uh, entrepreneurship. So it was like finding your niche. My mother said to us, she sat us down, that look, I don't expect you to go into construction because we're in it. We're like, thank God. <laughs> 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 but um, she said, I expect you to do something that is, it represents you and that you'd be passionate about. And where your passion is lies your riches. So I said fashion. And at first, they were weary about it. But I said, I, on top of just growing up with the culture of entrepreneurship, my whole family is stylish. I mean. You should see us when we go to funerals and <laughs> when family we go to birthdays. Function. My whole my family functions, we're all very, very stylish. And it, I, I translated that, growing up with that habit, turning it into a business, turning it into understanding it more than just being fashion and being stylish. Sure. The, the business and the nuts and bolts of fashion is not easy. Not from, from the supply chain, literally to the, the people that are cutting. What have you learned? What, where do you think, where are the opportunities for growth in and around the industry that if this area grows better, it's going to make it easier for you? Yes. Um, I learned the hard way because when I started, I had started importing. And number one, I learned that, okay, firstly, when I import clothing, it has, I have no um, direct sort of design aesthetic, you know, and I, I wanted to be part of the design process. I wanted to be part of like growing the industry as a whole, growing our econ economy as a whole within the fashion space. So I said, there's a market for, Im for customized clothing. And ever since I went into that, I understood, I saw better profit margins. I, I got different clientele that I would have never ever thought I would get because people love customized pieces. People love bespoke. People love to see your, your touch as the owner or as the designer on, yeah. on your garments. And also, I, I was not losing out on 40% import duties and tax. Sure, sure. So um, definitely um, localizing more, localized products more and manufacturing as a whole. Like there's, there's definitely a huge space in that. And I'm right now, we're like, hundred percent of our store is is like localized products That's that amazing. I create and that we Got design. It. Yeah. Do you guys put pressure on each other? Do you challenge each other? Like if Lorato Travel is kicking butt, but your fashion business is going a little bit slow, do you have that kind of camaraderie and that pressure? I don't think it's 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 competitive as such. If anything, it's us actually boosting each other to say, listen, just keep going. I know it's difficult right now, um, but just keep pushing, and it will definitely pay off in the end. What um, what is the strength that she has that you have, and vice versa? She is extremely good with people. Um, she, she's front of store, she really kicks ass. She's very good with customers, so I feed off of that from her. 
Um, yeah, that's 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 and? basically. And she's a strategic. Like I'm, I'm an emotional business person, so I always take things personally. Like, why did this person? She'd be like, no. But at the end of the day, this and this and this and this. And I'd be like, oh, that makes sense. So she's very strategic, and I think we bounce off each other in that sense. And I'm her most difficult customer. The one thing you know for a fact, if you had not have gotten it from your mom, you would not be where you are. What is that? The tenacity and the drive. My mom gets up in the morning. 5 a.m. without fail every single day so that drive and that tenacity to 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 chip away at you know making her business a, a success is something that I admire every single day for me like never ever take no for an answer my mom is such a go-getter she will knock at closed doors until their chains break off and I mean she doesn't stop at, at nothing no like she doesn't take anything personal she's always driven she's always pushing she's always trying this trying that trying and just that just watching her in that like I take so much from that and I learn every day that look it's not meant to be easy the journey is meant yeah. to have humps and bumps just so that you can take from it and so that it can mold you so you know uh, one of the you know, as we close this, like one of the most important things for me is intergenerational knowledge transfer. So what your mom taught you and what you hope to pass on. What's one thing as we close out that you definitely have to pass on to the next generation? For me, uh, to my children, definitely the fact that, look, uh, it's nice to have nice things. It's nice to live a luxurious life. But don't look for momentary happiness momentary satisfaction always look at investing investing in your future investing things that can make you grow as a human being or as a person in business so i mean my mother she's for the longest time she's been able to afford the nice things but i've never seen her go overboard and i mean being in this era where instagram is all about you know showing off and you know buying all the nice things which there's nothing wrong but always invest in, in invest more than buying the nice things. So that's definitely something I'd pass down. Um, for me, uh, the adage that goes: if you plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. For me, that um, that has rung true and true throughout my journey as an entrepreneur, and I'd like to pass that on um, to the next generation and my children. Um, you have to have a financial plan. You have to have a, 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 a personal plan as well in order for you to live a holistic life, as my sister was saying. Um, so that's what I would pass on to the next generation. You know what I love about your family is uh, your mom is sort of constructing the future of Africa. You guys are moving people around Africa and around to travel. Yes. And you're making sure that we're stylish. Oh, wow. Well. Nice. So thank you yeah, so much for joining you. us on Inside of Our C-Suite. Join us next week as we document and share the stories of more inspiring women who are shaping the next generation of Africa.